Hey, what's going on with it once again? Ladies and gentlemen, especially fanboys and fangirls, this is the one, the only Criticism Guy 2009, aka Nintendo Free 2011. Before I do begin, real quick, this video is brought to you by, of course, Power nonetheless, even though it's almost gone, but I had one left, so I decided to, um, you know, finish that off and maybe later on go out to the store and get some more. I don't know. We'll see. So, yeah, basically, um, I, it's been a good around five six months since the last time I did a top 10 video and you know what I decided to celebrate it anyways even though I don't have almost 150 subs you know what I'm gonna fucking do it regardless so and uh, before I begin I'm not gonna have no trolls and hating pieces of shit out there to decide you know leave crappy little ass troll comments out there so I'm probably gonna end up having um, the little thing ratings are gonna be banned unfortunately and that's what it has to come down to if I decide to do that maybe I'm not saying it's gonna be official but maybe so without further ado on that, I'm not going to have any like slideshow, I'm just going to show you these Pokeballs, top 10 best Pokeballs of all time, this is strictly my opinion, I know that one dude has a billion freaking subscribers, I'm subbed him on the Nintendo Free 2011 channel, um, his name is Jay Wits, most of you guys probably know who he is, especially you Pokemon fans out there, and without further ado, let's get started, so basically number 10, I should have put this in number 3 or 4, because this is the one I usually use the most, maybe other people do in the game. And this is the Ultra Ball. So um, the reason why Ultra Ball is at number 10, why it shouldn't be at number 3 or 4, is because um, it is a great Pokeball, don't get me wrong. It's just that sometimes the pricing on it, especially when you're just starting out in the adventures and the Pokemon games, it's expensive as hell. It's like 1200 fucking Poke Dollars. Maybe in the real world, that would probably be 12 bucks. But in the Pokemon world, that is extremely fucking expensive. Even though it has a high-ass capture rate, and a lot of people like to chug Ultra Balls. It's a legendary Pokemon most of the time. If they want to do legit, unless they used to have back in the days, like I used to have, um, had a Game Shark in hand, their action replay, you know, just use a billion little Master Balls, as many as you can. You only got to use one on every legendary. Simple as that. But unfortunately, I didn't have that at the time until third gen came out. Because first and second, I didn't have that kind of, you know, small little, like, um, cheat code device, sadly. So yeah, that's the reason why um, Ultra Ball is number 10. I always had that really cool little, like, um, design on it. Kind of look like a wasp or something. Looks sick as fuck. So that's um, number 10 right there. So coming in at number 9, and that is the Heavy Ball. And I remember this was, Heavy Ball was basically um, introduced in the second generation when Johto was real big back in the days. I remember it. I was there for it. I remember I got this on my Christmas day. Really fucking awesome. Back when I was living with my folks and shit, it was not fucking good times, you know? Sometimes it was, actually, no, it were great times. But other times, it's just not going to get personal with it. So, other than that, you know, the reason why I put it at number 9, it did good. It did work really good for super heavy, super huge fat Pokemon like Snorlax, or extremely heavy Pokemon like Legendaries, like Groudon, Kyogre, um, Snorlax, and he wasn't even a Legendary type. And 4-Gen, I don't know. I think 4-Gen may be Giratina, uh, Palkia, Diago, basically every Legendary type Pokemon in every generation. It worked perfectly with. But sadly, I think in 4th and 5th gen, that wasn't available until Heart Gold Soul Silver came out. And then you were able to get them all over again like you did way back in the days. Just like in my opinion. It was freaking awesome as hell. And uh, the design for it looks really fucking cool. It looks like one of Misty's lure balls. If any of you guys remember the 1st and 2nd gen for the anime, that was really fucking awesome back in the days. Um, you know, Misty would use her little Misty lure balls or whatever. But this wasn't the lure ball. It was a heavy ball. It kind of almost have the exact same design, just maybe like 10 or 11 percent of it's a little bit different, but overall still pretty good. <coughs> Sorry about that. Excuse me a sec there. <coughs> but yeah, that's on number nine for you right there. Sorry if you hear any um dog bark. I can't do anything about that. So coming in at number eight is the dive ball. And I actually got all these from like I didn't get them physically, but I saw them like on Amazon and like Google, and I decided to just use the pictures for the demonstration. So dive ball. The reason why it's at number 8, it was an okay Pokeball, only if you went under in the third generation. This was one like the move dive was like invented for this Hoenn gen. When you know you still have Blaze again, Sceptile, Swampert is one of your favorites. Mine, personal favorite, was Sceptile. The other two were okay, but I really wish it would have been like Grass Dragon because it felt like it had that dragon vibe to it, but unfortunately it just made it pure grass. Yeah, the reason why it's at number 8, I mean. Most of the time, this thing was really unsuccessful for me whenever I used it back in the days when I still had Pokemon um, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. I even know there's like a lot of emulators out there with a lot of fan base versions of it. I'm talking about the legit days until like around 05, 06. That's when they started making the emulators. Emulators, however you want to pronounce it. 
I mean, the design looked really fucking awesome, but at the same time, its catch rate was kind of shit. I didn't really look up the information on that because I was too lazy for it. But yeah, other than that, you know, it does look pretty sick as fuck. I'm not going to lie. And, um, you know, I used to use it for, like, maybe Relic Camp, and Relic Camp was such a fucking pain in the ass to fucking get. Even though most of you guys know about three weeks ago when I did my unboxing, my Nintendo Free Channel, I got a shiny Relic Camp and a trading card, which is really fucking awesome for the TCG shit. But other than that, I'm talking about in the end game. He was just a fucking pain in the, literally in the fucking posterior, A.K. the ass, you know, just to fucking catch. I'd use at least 70 or 80 different fucking Ultra Balls just to catch that fucking thing back in the day. The only thing this Die Ball was really good for is either for Love This, Chin Chow, or like um, Clamper, and that was it. The other Pokemon was just way too difficult to catch this shit. And maybe Wingle and Pelipper. So that's number eight for you guys for um, the Die Ball. And bringing in number seven, some of you probably may, may or may not agree with this. This one, once again, was introduced in the third generation in the Hoenn generation region. This was the Timer Ball. And the Timer Ball, I know a lot of people will probably put this on number one on their list, but I put it for number seven because it just did not do wonders for me. It just didn't. It ended up being complete mierda. Fucking bullshit. That's what it was for me, you know? Straight out fucking trash. That's what it was, sadly. The only time it actually did work like, as if you use it, like, after you're done using, like, 20, 30, maybe 40 Ultra Balls at the most, or Pokeballs or Great Balls, which they're not on this list, maybe in an honorable mention, we'll see. The reason why I put it at number 7 is because it didn't really do wonders for me. Even after I threw 30 or 40 different Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Balls, it still didn't do crap for me, sadly. Ain't the only time I actually did do crap for me is if I was using it on a super weak Pokemon, like, Caterpie, Weedle, even though they didn't exist in the third gen because they took them out after first and second were done, which was sad. And a uh, real super weak starter Pokemon that you get like a Badoo in like four generation or Dunsparce or Talo. Any of the super weak Pokemon when you first start on your journey, that's when the timer ball is good, but uh, sadly it's unavailable at that time. So I don't know what it was, but Game Freak, they always puzzled the crap out of me. Like no, not knowing the reason that this didn't, it was actually like 10 Pokebot, Poke dollars, 10 grand Poke dollars for this thing. So it didn't come cheap. It did come really pricey. So that's the reason why it's at number seven. So number six on this um, really badass thing right here, this list of Pokemon, I can get it right. Okay, number six on here is a really awesome Pokeball. It was extremely rare and it was introduced in third generation. Again, I don't know why, but a lot of these Pokeballs. They were introduced in third generation, except for Ultra Ball. It was there all the way up to now, from first all the way to sixth gen. Sorry about that. Let me just take this call really quick. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing good. Yeah, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I had a little bit of an interruption there. I'm not sure if I'm going to edit that or not, even though I usually don't edit most of my videos. But we'll see what happens. So, Like I was saying, this was introduced. The Luxury Ball was introduced in third generation, the Hoenn region. And uh, basically, pretty much... <clears throat> sorry about that. I need a little bit of a drink here. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. That's the spot right there. <laughs> so, yeah, basically... um. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just a complete fucking rat today. I don't know why. <laughs> this video is going really fucking good too, but it had to be failed, sadly. But yeah, fucking um, Luxury Ball was a real badass Pokeball. Sadly, you can only at least get three of them at max when you found them, like, either as an item, with an item fi finder, or if you did it, like, um, randomly. It was extremely, like, super rare. It did work really well, but 
it would work, work with really strong, powerful Pokemon. It didn't really work with weak Pokemon that well. That was the only flaw it had. The stylish design for it looked like a limousine for some reason, or some speed racer car. That's the reason why I really like this Pokeball that much. I think in 4th Gen, I think it was able, you were able to buy it after that, and maybe 5th. I forgot if it was in 5th. It should have been black and white, too, because I did see a couple of those Ultra, not Ultra Balls, on Luxury Balls at the time. So, yeah, that's number uh, 5 with the Luxury Ball, if it was number 5. Okay, I think number 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, yeah, this is number 5 right here. That was number 6. <laughs> Coming in number 5 is the Dust Ball. And the reason why I put Dust Ball number 5 it does have, like, um, flaws, pros and cons, but at the same time, it's kind of crap. The only time it's crap is when you use it in the day and afternoon. If you use it at nighttime, or if you use it inside caves, that's the only time it actually has a full advantage of getting almost 100% capture for the Dust Ball. Almost. Sometimes 70 or 80%. Uh, once in a while, it will go 100% if you're using it in the caves, especially. If you're going to get a Gold Bat, or like an Onyx, or Steelix, or whatever fucking ground, steel, dark type Pokemon that are in caves. That's the Pokemon you can get almost 100% of the time, without fail almost. Almost. It really comes close with that other ball, which I'll get to as number one. But you guys can guess what that is. And the design was pretty chill too. So, at number four, not number five, Safari Ball. I know some of you people are thinking, why did I put Safari Ball on there? The reason is because, you know, it had its own unique design and style. You know, it had that little army military thing that was going on. That looked pretty chill, decent for me in my opinion. There's that. And then uh, the other reason why it was really, really, really awesome is that um, you can only use it in the Safari Zone unless you had that glitch where you can get out of the go through walls thing. And you can probably take as many as you can with you whenever you start. Sorry about that. And I just woke up earlier, so just in case you guys are wondering why I'm a little tired, you know why. But yeah, other than that, you know, with the Safari Ball, it looks um, decent. The only thing that sucked about it is that... Um, it was weak most of the time, just like how repeat ball was, or like the starter quick balls and stuff like that. So it is does have its disadvantage on that, but as far as interior design, it looks freaking amazing as hell. It looks freaking kick fucking ass, and that's why it's number four. And you can catch Pokemon you can't really see anywhere else. In third generation, it did a little bit okay, but it wasn't as great as it was for first gen. In second gen, the reason I remember why it got taken out is because the directors, they said like, um, people were using that glitch too many times, so they got pissed off, and um... They decided to use the bug catching contest and stuff, which is kind of crap for me in my opinion. I never really liked it besides just getting Scyther and Penzer. That's really almost what everyone else would use it for. Coming number three is the Premier Ball. And the only reason, like, what, only way how you can get this kind of Pokeball, I'm sorry about that, my eyes are itching like fucking hell. But yeah, um, the only reason why you can um, actually catch, not catch this Pokemon, but you can only purchase this if you get, like, like a decent amount of Pokeballs, you get 10 plus different Pokeballs and potions and antidotes when you first start in your journey. That's the only way you can get Premier Ball. I used to call it Premier Ball before, before I called it um, Premier Ball. That's what it's called. I remember that one girl, I know she has like 36k something subs. Her name's um, Super Duper Tutorials, aka Danny. She's a really fucking cool shit. Um, I know she has the actual little like Premier Ball in her little videos. I know she's a little bit of a psychopath crazy little fucking girl, but she's funny as hell, you should definitely check that chick out, <clears throat> she's like literally like sister I wouldn't, I like would have loved to have, unfortunately I didn't get that, <laughs> but that's fucking life for you, you know, I'm not gonna turn this into a rant and shit, okay, but another reason why this on um, Premier Ball was really awesome, I love this really awesome color for it, it was like pure marble white, really freaking badass, I used to catch this at Ralts all the time back then when third generation when I was introducing that thing, Look freaking damn awesome, not gonna lie, you know? It just sucked, you had to only get it once every, once in a while. I think at 4th and 5th January, you were able to finally purchase it after that. So yeah, that's pretty much the Premier Ball. Number 2 and 1, I know some people may or may not disagree with me, but, um, or agree with me on this, but, um, I'm going for the GS Ball. The reason why I put GS Ball on there, I know you're not, we're never able to use it. I know in the old beta version, like I remember that girl Tamashi Paria or Tamashi Reviews, um, if any guys know who she is, she's real big like that dude, J Wits. Um, the reason why they took that out is because, um, I think it's because of Celebi in the beta version, you were able to catch it with the GS ball, which of course is still for gold and silver. That's the reason why they put it on there instead of having like a white like um, bottom like all the other Pokeballs had, it actually had a silver like bottom, hence the name GS ball, gold and silver. I wonder if that would have made a C-ball, like crystal ball, for like Suicune, you know? 
That always puzzles me. In the anime, they never opened this thing. They never touched it. And after they gave it to Kurt, we never heard from this thing again. That did piss me the fuck off a little bit. They left us on literally a cliffhanger forever, which was sad. And the only people that probably know about this is directors and producers of, like, the Pokemon series and stuff. Of why they never used it. In the games, at least we got an explanation there. It's just supposed to be... They were supposed to intentionally use it for, like, Celebi when you go into Elex Force back in 2nd Gen. I think it worked for 4th Gen, too, but, um, when they had Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, the remake for it. But, yeah, that's what the whole difference was. I know you're supposed to go back in time and face Giovanni. And that whole creepypasta thing ended up happening with him. How he fell down, and, like, in the water, he crashed to his death, and he ended up dying in there with these rocks or whatever. It was either that or it was the radio static. It was one of those two people said. But other than that, you know, Mom, it does, it is a damn shame that it was never explained all the way, but I did like the really badass colors that it had, gold and silver, really awesome stuff. And you guys know about me on my alternative media videos when I talk about, like, real news and truth and stuff like that. You know I love gold and silver with the bullion and stuff like that. So other than that, um, number one, a lot of people probably did see this coming. It is the fucking Master Ball. And the reason why Master Ball is number one, it's always like a... For me, it might be 100%, but it's really like a billion percent chance that you can always catch any Pokemon. Whether it's weak as hell, strong as hell. One of the extremely rare Pokemon, especially if you're going to use it on a shiny Pokemon. One of the greatest things you can do with this Pokeball is use it on a shiny type Pokemon. Well, this shiny's not really a type. Shiny colored Pokemon is extremely rare. That's what I would use it for if I ever did see a shiny back in the days. Another reason, this is one of the most epicest balls ever. I think the only time it was introduced in the anime... Like, um, I think after the Indigo Plateau, way back in the Gen 1 days, when Ash, Misty, and Brock, they were done with the Elite Four. I think Richie, he ended up getting the Master Ball. And I remember Pokemon in the first movie, Mewtwo was the one that got the Master Ball. Like, um, it was like Evil Dusk Master Balls. Master Ball. Master Balls. So, yeah, that's the reason why Master Ball is awesome as hell. It's been an icon since 1997. Like, literally, all the way up to 2013. Going on 2014 in about two months, so... We're getting close to that mark. So yeah, that's the reason why Master Ball looks boss as hell, you know, never failed. It was in every Pokemon game ever made, even like the Pokemon Pinball games or Pokemon um, the Rescue Squad teams or Mystery Dungeons. It was literally in every type of genre of Pokemon games ever created. Seriously. Even the little TCG games, you know, and the trading cards. It was Master Ball. Everywhere you looked in the Pokemon thing, Master Ball was fucking there without a shadow of doubt. That's why this thing is a legend in its own right. So, um, two real fast honorable mentions. I actually have three. If any of you guys know about them. Let's see if I can get them on here. Oh, yeah. This one right here, the Quick Ball. The only reason the Quick Ball was pretty fucking cool, in my opinion, is because, um, I guess it had its, like, you know, pros and cons and everything like that. I think it was awesome as fucking hell. If I could get this thing on here. The Quick Ball... It kind of looked like a, if any guys remember that cartoon from WB, his WB Static Shot, it kind of looked like that a little bit, but in the form of a Pokeball. I thought it was hilarious as fuck. So there's that honorable mention. Another real quick honorable mention I wanted to give out real quick right here. See if I can find it. I'm not sure if this was the Heal Ball or the Love Ball, but it looked pretty decent. So the Heal or Love Ball. The reason why the Heal Ball looked really cool and it had its advantages, uh, if you didn't want, you're too lazy to go to the Pokemon Center, the heal ball was there for you. That's the second honorable mention. It, it did have its advantage there, but other than that, that was the only time you were able to heal that Pokemon. And that was it. That was the disadvantage of it. You can never heal it again. So yeah, other than that, and then the last one, see if I can find repeat ball for a minute. And repeat ball has to be somewhere. I think that's it. Oh, there's another one here too, repeat ball, if any of you guys can see that. Because repeat ball, the only reason why I put it on here is honorable mention is because, um, it didn't make it in the top 10 list because it did have a lot of flaws with it. You can only strictly catch Pokemon that uh, you previously caught before in the wild. Or really super weak Pokemon. That was the only two advantages it had. The other disadvantages, you can't catch any strong Pokemon or really good Pokemon or even shinies on this thing. So I highly doubt you'd ever be able to catch one there unless you use some kind of cheat hack thing for it. Then you could probably catch it with that. But that's all I had to say for now. So like I always say... Is what it is, ain't what it ain't. See you when I see you guys. Have a good day, have a good night. Wherever you're out around the world, don't drink smoke weed at the same time. Don't do anything reckless. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Be easy. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you guys next time, all right? Take care and goodbye. And that's pretty much it, okay? Late. Peace. I'm gone. And I'll uh, see you when I see you around. I'm out of here. Late.